sending human beings to Mars is hugely more resource intensive and expensive. The Earth has got Van Allen belts, which are associated with the Earth's magnetic field, which protect us from a lot of charged particles that come mainly from the sun. So again, you might be aware that just a week or so ago, there was um, some uh, quite spectacular northern lights, Aurora displays. Those are linked to the release of charged particles from the sun's atmosphere. And then when they come to the Earth, they cause the Earth's atmosphere to glow. But the harmful effects of those charged particles are greatly mitigated by the Earth's Van Allen belts. So um, the International Space Station, being of only about a few hundred kilometers up, I forget the exact distance, is, is still kind of within the protective shield of the Earth's Van Allen belts. But going to the moon and back takes you beyond that. Um, but that doesn't mean that the risk of radiation is impossible to mitigate against. It just means you've got to think carefully about not sending your astronauts to the moon when there's a big solar storm. Um, I'm not actually sure how much NASA really thought about that in advance, but they certainly didn't have to deal with astronauts encountering a big solar storm while they were on their way to the moon and back. But then the trips only took of order a week. If you're sending astronauts to Mars and back, then one of the big changes, one of the big differences in keeping them alive during that long, long voyage is the much, much higher risk that the sun will spew out some quite harmful um, high energy particles as part of a solar storm while they're on the way to Mars. And Mars doesn't have an appreciable magnetic field that would protect you on the surface of Mars the way that we are protected here on the surface of the Earth. So all things considered, 